I want to start by saying if I seem a little out of sorts or if my voice seems a little quiet or if I just kind of lose my train of thought, um, I'm sick right now. Uh, so I just, I feel like I've been blasted in the face and kind of dumbed down to my weakest form. Uh, kind of similar to uh, what happened to certain someones in this chapter. So kind of worked out nicely. I got a little segue into today's chapter summary. Hello, Internet. I am the hero of Julios once again with another One Piece chapter summary. This week's chapter is chapter 1122, 1112, or sorry, 1122, 1122. Lots of ones and twos. Um, the time is right. Or, sorry, time is right, not the time. Um, but the art this week actually isn't uh, any particular cover story or fan request. This is strictly Oda being Oda, as he draws this amazing artwork of Smoker, a homage to an amazing piece of artwork that happened 15 years ago, when a young, or not 15 years ago, 22 years ago? Because he was 15 when he did it. A young, young man who said, I'm going to draw this. I'm going to send it in to the Usopp Pirate Gallery because I don't know if they still do that in Japan. I don't see it in the question corners anymore. Um, but it was basically um, in the early days of the One Piece manga, uh, sometimes instead of the SBS, you know, the Oda answering questions, we'd get fan art submitted and we would just see a bunch of drawings made by kids who really like One Piece. One particular artist drew a really nice image of Smoker. And Oda really liked it. Cut to a few years later, uh, well, well, not a few years, uh, quite a few years later, uh, Oda was at a New Year's party for all the mangaka of Shonen Jump, and this young artist came up to him and said, Hey, it's me, <laughs> the, little, the little kid that sent in this artwork, whatever. And Oda said, Oh, that's cool. Welcome to being a mangaka, being an official author of the stories that appear in Shonen Jump. This was Horikoshi, the creator of My Hero Academia. I don't usually talk about other manga on this channel, although I've thought about, um, there's a couple other up-and-coming mangas that I'd like to maybe talk about now and then. Actually, I have a comparison to one later on in this uh, chapter summary, but it's really cool to see that Oda pays homage not only to legends before him like Dragon Ball or his peers like Naruto but that he even acknowledges those who have come after him like young Horikoshi. Uh, the reason Oda did this recreation of his drawing is because this week is also the final chapter of My Hero Academia. Personally, I don't know. I, I, there's things about the ending I didn't like. There's things about the ending I did. Uh, I read it almost every week like I do One Piece. Sometimes I'd let a couple chapters get ahead and I'd catch up. But overall, it's a fun ride. I would recommend it to anyone who isn't super passionately into manga. Um, if you really like comic book stories, this is a nice segue into the medium. Uh, but enough about other manga. Let's talk about the actual reason we're here. The chapter starts off with pretty much every chapter we've had since Vegapunk began this entire speech. The world is confused. We got this one ice island t t talking about it. We got this tribalistic looking island talking about it. Most importantly, though, we got the inmates of Impel Down talking about it. They're all cheering. They're all excited because... Some people seem to have misinterpreted Vegapunk's speech. Vegapunk said the world will be entrusted to the one who finds the One Piece. That didn't exactly mean pirates, although a lot of people know that pirates are the ones searching for the One Piece. So there's actually a few concerned citizens who even say, what is the Navy going to do about this? And we know that Sakazuki is like, ah, crap, we're going to have to go get them. We're going to have to go get it now. So he's, you know, starting to do his thing and whatever he can mobilize, given the red tape that binds him to the ground. But uh, we see that the Impel Down inmates are super stoked about this. They try to suppress this information, but unfortunately for them, every transponder snail in the building is relaying this message. It cannot be overridden, and that's exactly what Vegapunk was going for, to tell as many people as possible what happened. 
he does finish with him saying that Joy Boy is hit. But we'll get to that in a moment. Individuals of randomness around the world are not the only people who know about this message. They are not the only people receiving this message. One of the most important people receiving this message is Kobe, as he's listening to this and hearing that, you know, whoever finds the One Piece determines the future of the world. And as we know, he's one of the 12 people that Oda showed in that final panel, which everybody is saying is like, these are the 12 most important characters in the story now. Yeah, I can agree with that. Every character we saw there is very important one way or another. I'm not exactly sure how important I would say Garling is. I would like to know a little more about him before I lock him down as top 12 most important characters of One Piece period. But he was one that Oda selected, so I'm looking forward to learning more about him. And also the mysterious stranger who may or may not be related to Shanks, may or may not be the man marked by flames, may or may not be, insert crazy fan theory here, could be Luffy's mom. Who knows? It's One Piece. But as Kobe's listening in on this, he actually says Luffy, and you actually, we see a little flashback of the day he met Luffy and how Luffy saved him from Alvita. He says, I'm sorry, Luffy, but I may actually have to put a stop to your dream. Kobe may have to go find the One Piece and put it in the hands of a person who would do the right thing with it. Whether or not Kobe believes he's the right person for the job, because as we remember back on Hachinosu, uh, he didn't exactly see himself as the main character. He was like, oh my gosh, all these marines are attacking the island. They must be here to save me. No, I gotta keep that out of my mind. That's way too selfish. Kobe does not understand that if the manga wasn't about Luffy, there is a strong chance this manga could have been about him. Admit it. You, you, he has the same beginning that a shonen protagonist has. He's down on his luck, he's in trouble, uh, someone comes and saves him and tells him, hey, follow your dreams, and suddenly he's swept up into a world beyond his little East Blue comprehension, filled with dangerous pirates, an insane teacher, aka Garp, and not to mention love interests like Hibari. So Kobe has all the makings of being the main character of One Piece. The camera's just not pointing at him. Speaking of the camera pointing at people, Buggy is talking to his legion of loyal minions, and they're all saying, you know, Chairman Buggy, it's it's the time for your, it's going to be your world. It's going to be your world, Buggy. And Buggy goes, how dare you? How dare you, sir, say that this is going to be my world? It's going to be our world. And they all start cheering. He's like, oh, they're all, you're so great, Buggy. And as Buggy's sitting there, he starts trembling as he feels the gaze of Crocodile behind him. And Crocodile tells him to sit. And he goes, okay. He gets back down. So, whatever conversation they're going to have. But Buggy's on the list. Buggy's on the list of 12. Again, another character where if One Piece was even more of a comedy anime than it was already, Buggy would potentially be the main character. You know what? If you really sit down and think about it, all 12 of these characters, except Garling and the um, Mysterious Stranger, they all have what it takes to be the main character of this manga. That is something I absolutely love about One Piece. And, I mean, if, if more time was spent on some of his classmates, uh, Deku, you know, My Hero Academia, uh, his classmates all had the potential to be the main characters, too. Granted, in an ensemble anime like that, it's really difficult to pin it down to, you know, more than a few main characters. But, uh, yeah. Like I said, my mind is scattered today. Where was I? This is why I haven't put down my notes this whole time. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, Caribou. That's what happened next. So, we cut to Katarina Devon. She's on the transponder snail, and Caribou's in the background like, Oh, please! teach senpai you know notice me he's the bartolomeo to luffy you know or he's the he is to teach what bartolomeo is to luffy and blackbeard says he's gonna hear him out and if this information doesn't blow me away well just blow him away <laughs> so 
Caribou, your life literally depends on whether or not this information is juicy. Which we all know it is. And it's terrifying to think of what Blackbeard will do with this info. I don't, I don't see, no, no, no offense, love Yamato, love Momonosuke. I don't see them really surviving an attack from Blackbeard. I really don't. And I don't see the Fishman Island, you know, the Ryugu Kingdom, I don't really see them doing well against Blackbeard either. So we're looking at a kidnapped Shirahoshi, probably held captive aboard the Pluton itself sometime in the future. Back to what I was saying, though, about the transponder snails and whatnot, Emmett takes a lethal blow from Warcury, the giant boar. And sadly, the transponder snail does not make it out of this one. We see it on the ground. We see it taken down. I'm pretty sure it's it's not dead, maybe, I'm hoping. Poor little snail. But this could be the end of the little transponder snail. Regardless, this is the end of the transmission. And all we have to go off of is what I said earlier. Joy Boy is his... Personally, I think it's the beginning of the word history. Joy Boy is history's greatest hero. Joy Boy is history's greatest villain. Joy Boy is history's final link or last character or last power player. Joy Boy is his own man. Joy Boy is his own kingdom. Joy Boy is his own mindset. There's a lot of words that start with H-I-S. And that is the American English translation. So uh, I would definitely recommend looking into some Japanese translators, seeing what their opinions are on this. Uh, Artor is always a good choice. Um, you know, the Library of Ohara is always well appreciated when I'm doing my own research. But we don't know what the end of that info is. But it doesn't stop there. As Emmett takes that hit, his body's, you know, giving out, and he's standing there before Luffy and the Gorosei are in front of him, and he says, Joy Boy, I am so sorry. I'm sorry I couldn't make you king. That's interesting. He also tells Luffy, I'm sorry that I mistook you for Joy Boy. You just, you sound so much like him, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you for letting me hear that heartbeat again. What is your name? And Luffy, of course, in typical Luffy fashion, tells him the whole title. I am Monkey D. Luffy, and now I'm going to be King of the Pirates. And he goes, ah, that makes sense. So he grabs this little rope inside of him. Joy Boy. Or not Joy Boy, uh, um, Emmett. And he tugs on it. And the Iron Giant loosens this rope that lets out a burst of Conqueror's Hockey. The Conqueror's Hockey takes out a bunch of Marines, as Conqueror's Hockey has been known to do, and Luffy even acknowledges that it is Conqueror's Hockey, so we know what it is. The, the two giants, Dory and Bragi, are even shocked to see a robot with hockey. But it doesn't stop there. This was the time to use it, as he, as he put it. And, I'm sorry, what? One moment, my cat needs to be let out. This was what Joy Boy meant by the time. As this burst of hockey takes out the five elders. Well, all of them except Mars, because Luffy and Bonnie had sent him flying already. Uh, Bonnie, Frankie, Sanji hitting Luffy, doing the whole ping pong thing. Uh, he was sent... Apparently back to Marijoie, as we very quickly see the other elders teleport back there. So it's actually kind of funny. I didn't leave, I didn't put the panels in there just because um, I just had so many to choose from. But the panel of the elders changing back to their original forms, it's the, the first three that change back is kind of funny. But Jupiter, um, the, the sandworm, he's literally got his arms above his head as he's like falling upside down so it's almost like in his beast form his mouth is his hands and the dude's literally like doing this i, I would love to see his hybrid form because i'm gonna guess it's just like two worms on his arms and he just kind of like 
uses like double chompers to try and attack people. Um, so the other elders, I would guess to hide either to hide their true forms or to just hide the fact that they were there, they teleport away. As soon as they lose control of their beast forms, as soon as this burst of hockey proves to be too much for them, uh, they all teleport away. And they all teleport back to Marijoie, where Mars is sitting there in the chair, kind of unamused. And I, I mean, where do you get this haughty attitude looking at the rest of them? Because he's just like... <sighs> He, he even gives that, like, eyebrow raise of, like, like Jim Halpert looking at the camera, kind of just like, really, guys? A burst of hockey took you out. How inelegant of you. Which, my brother pointed this out to me. Mars of the Gorosei looks way too much like Henderson from Spy Family. It's another manga I've been reading. I cannot get over how much he looks like him to the point where we have started making elegant jokes with Mars. And I, I don't know. I mean, the fat, this Her Mr. Harriman from, you know, Foster's home looking dude has the audacity to call the, I mean, he doesn't say anything. I, I'll say that he doesn't say anything, but the look on his face just says disappointment when he wasn't even caught in that blast. Speaking of not getting caught in that blast, though, Eam is panicking. We actually see Eam doubled over in pain, screaming, while this other silhouetted figure is like, Oh, Lord Eam, are you okay? And, and Eam's like, Joy Boy. So Eam's having a heart attack. Also, there's another individual in this room, and I cannot for the life of me remember if we knew there was another individual in this room. I feel like we have seen someone else in there. But this might be the first time. I'm going to have to look it up. If if I if I do find proof, if I find caught what's the word? If I can confirm or deny the fact that there's always been a second person with Eam, I'll put it down here. If you see no text, it means I didn't find anything before I finished editing. Um but there's another person in that room with Eam. So it's either Eam really can split himself up and talk to himself, or like the Gorosei are, you know, extensions of himself or what have you. Or there, oh, I guess it could be maybe Garling and the God's Knights know about him, and that's just one of the God's Knights in the room. Anyways, I'm way more interested in this silhouetted figure than I am in the silhouetted figure in that 12 character panel because this person knows Eam and is in e and hangs out with Eam in the butterfly room where he's got that weird, you know, simp photo of, uh, of Lily. That's her name of Lily in his home. So whoever that is, uh, but anyways, it is joy boys hockey. That is, that is what Eam feels because Eam would recognize that kind of power. This brings us to the final set of panels, a teeny tiny flashback dedicated to Emmett, the Iron Giant, and Joy Boy. As Joy Boy tells him, he says, Emmett, I'm about to do something pretty crazy. I'm going to take the most powerful, hang on, word, word for word here, the greatest hockey and tie it up in a knot. And then I'm going to put that knot inside of you. Because someday, in the far-off future, in the distant land of 2024, you're going to need it. You're either going to need it to protect you, or you're going to need it to protect someone very important to you. And when that time is right, undo the knot. And little Emmett's like, the time? And he's like, that's right, because someday in the future, I'm not going to be around to protect you. But if you pull that knot... It'll be like I'm there again, just one more time. And little Emmett, because I guess in the official Japanese, Emmett talks like a little kid, which is something that kind of gets lost in translation. So Emmett, with the mind of a child, effectively tells Joy Boy, like, oh, man, that's going to be such a long time away. And, you know, but I'll be I'll be ready for it. And Joy Boy's like, well, I'm not dead yet. So let's not worry about it too much. And as 
his memory, you know, as that flashback fades away, Emmett talks to himself and he goes, well, I sure hope I don't get lonely. And as Emmett's standing there, we got uh, the, the, the crew. Oh, I should have mentioned the crew's reunited because the Thousand Sunny landed. Uh, the burst of hockey stopped um, Venus from catching up to them. And they're all going to sail away. So Emmett watching the new Joy Boy go off and reminiscing about the old Joy Boy. The only thing that stands before Emmett now is Saturn. Saturn's back to his old man form, but I'm sure he and Emmett are going to have an exchange of words next chapter. Maybe, maybe we'll even get proof as to whether or not the elders were there all those years ago. Because remember, 200 years ago, Emmett was moving and the five elders remember him, which means the elders are at least 200 years old. I would like to know why Emmett attacked 200 years ago if another Joy Boy hasn't been confirmed since Joy Boy. In that spot 200 years ago, something important happened. Something to the point where Emmett woke up and attacked or did something. Maybe had to go somewhere. I'm hoping that's what the conversation's about. But let me know in your comments below. Maybe uh, Saturn's not going to say anything. Maybe he's just going to turn into his spider form and he's just going to spider stomp again because gosh darn it, I feel like Saturn's just the most unoriginal fighter in all of One Piece. He's got like eight different abilities and always chooses stomp. It's like a Pokemon. He's run out of all the PP of his other moves because apparently they were all one PowerPoint moves. Anyways, Saturn's my least favorite elder. Let me know in the comments what you think's going to happen next chapter. We're on break next week, so I'm going to have to figure something else out. And I really hope my head cold goes away because, gosh darn it, I I'm editing this is going to be really annoying because there's a lot of broken thoughts and pauses. Oh, right. This is the hero of Julios, Xing out.